Following up with my last video, I thought it would be worthwhile to present a statistical portrait of abortion in the United States. Not all of these stats are clearly supportive of a pro-choice position, of course. Only about 6% of abortions are performed because of health risks to the mother or to the fetus, and only about 1-2% to of abortions are because of rape or incest, for example. But my interest here is not in making an argument for abortion. It's in informing people about the facts of abortion. The text I'm about to read comes from the book Intervention and Reflection by Ronald Munson. It is a textbook I use in my bioethics class, and the figures come from various sources, mostly the CDC, and the years of the stats range from 1997 to 2007. About 25% of all pregnancies among American women end with abortion. When the pregnancies aren't intended, this percentage rises to almost half, 49%. Each year, more than 20 out of every 1,000 women aged 15 to 44 have an abortion, and nearly half, 48%, of those who have an abortion have had one before. In 2002, 1.29 million abortions were performed. This was a decrease from 1.36 million in 1996 and reflects what may have been a relatively constant number. Public health experts estimate that during the 1950s and 60s, before the 1973 Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade that legalized abortion, 200,000 to 1.2 million illegal abortions were performed each year. The number of abortions increased after the procedure was made legal, peaking at 1.6 million in 1990. Since then, abortions have been declining, measured both as an absolute number and as a percentage of women of childbearing age who have them. It's beginning to look as if the number of abortions has stabilized between 1 million and 1.3 million a year. More than half, 52% of women who have an abortion are younger than 25. Women 20 to 24 account for 33% of all abortions, and teenagers account for another 19%. European Americans have 14% of abortions performed in the United States. African Americans 38%, and Hispanics 21%. To put the figures another way, black women are three times as likely to have an abortion as white women, and Hispanic women are 1.5 times as likely. The highest rate of abortion, 121 per 1,000 women, is among African American women 20 to 24 years of age. And the second highest rate, 90 per 1,000, is among African American women 25 to 29 years of age. Of women who have abortions, 43% say they are Protestant, and 20% identify themselves as Catholic. About 75% of all abortions are obtained by women who have never been married. More than 60% of abortions are among women who have previously given birth to at least one child. Each year, about 13,000 women have abortions as a result of rape or incest. 75% of women say they are choosing to have abortion because having a child would interfere with their education, work, or other responsibilities. 66% say they cannot afford to have a, or another, child for financial reasons. 50% say they don't want to be a single parent or that they aren't getting along with their husband or partner and don't want to face the problems of adding another child to the situation. Some critics of abortion claim that its availability encourages women to use it as a form of birth control. The statistics, however, suggest that the situation is more complicated than that. Nearly all women seeking abortion have, at some time, used some form of contraception, and the majority used it during the month in which they became pregnant. The intention of the majority to avoid becoming pregnant is most often thwarted by their failure to use contraception properly and consistently. 8% of women having abortions have never used any form of birth control. Those who are young, poor, African American, unmarried, or poorly educated are most likely to have never used contraception. 54% of women having abortions use some method of birth control during the month in which they became pregnant. 76% of pill users and 49% of condom users say they were inconsistent in the way they used the methods. Those who said they used them correctly were, respectively, 13 and 14%. In 2000, the Federal Food and Drug Administration approved the drug RU486 for inducing abortion, permitting women in the early stages of pregnancy to avoid surgical abortion. About 560,000 drug-induced abortions were performed in 2006. Fewer than 1% of women who have abortions experience major complications. The risk of death associated with abortion increases with the length of pregnancy. Up to 8 weeks, 1 death per million. 16 to 20 weeks, 
one per 29,000. More than 21 weeks, one per 11,000. The risk of death associated with childbirth is 11 times as high as the risk associated with abortion. During the period 1996 to 2000, the number of hospitals, clinics, and physicians providing abortion declined by 11%. 34% of all women 15 to 44 years of age lived in a county without an abortion provider in 2000. In 2000, the cost of a surgical abortion in the 10th week of pregnancy carried out with local anesthesia in a clinic or doctor's office ranged from $150 to $4,000. The average cost was $372. Value on